So let's speculate for a few minutes on how repression theory arose in the first place. So what was it in Freud's thinking that arose to add in the idea of repressed memories? And what has it been in theorists in the century that followed that seemed to recur, where they held a theory similar to Freud, and then they added this repressed memory aspect as an ad hoc addition. So the central theory to understand how this probably happened is the theory that Freud held, which was that childhood trauma or abuse, whichever way you want to call it, is the major cause of psychopathology, or what they used to call adult neurosis. Now, this is not such a bad theory if it's left like this, where it's falsifiable and scientific, without any invisible entities. Childhood trauma is measurable, if you're careful, and adult pathology is also measurable, and these are non-invisible entities. So this is a falsifiable and scientific start. It's a reasonable start. Now, what happens if this theory is a political theory to you that you want to protect? How could you possibly make it unfalsifiable so that it is never refuted? Well, let's look at this theory with ad hoc additions that make it unfalsifiable. So childhood trauma causes adult neurosis. It's a reasonable hypothesis. It may, there may be a, a small relationship between the two or a large one. It's an open question. But what happens if you add things to this theory, such as the idea that vague symptom lists equate to adult neurosis? That makes it very much easy to always find a connection between childhood trauma and adult neurosis. Just by making adult neurosis so broad so that everybody could find themselves in vague symptom lists. So in other words, if somebody does have trauma and they feel that they don't have adult neurosis, they will still nevertheless be able to find some of these vague symptom lists, such as the vague symptom lists uh, listed in the book, The Courage to Heal. This preserves the theory quite strongly. So without this addition, there would be exceptions to the theory, right? So there'd be people who had been traumatized, but they had no adult neurosis. Adding this vagueness of symptoms helps block that disconfirming evidence. Similarly, and more importantly, repressed trauma is an invisible type of trauma that helps preserve this theory. It's an ad hoc addition that makes the theory impossible to prove wrong. Because if you have somebody come in to your practice with severe neurosis or psychopathology, depression, headaches, whatever you want to call it, and then they report no childhood trauma, that would formally have disconfirmed your theory. However, if you introduce the invisible entity of repressed trauma, you can state that these individuals must have repressed trauma and your theory that trauma is a cause of neurosis is still maintained. So by adding these vague symptom lists and repressed trauma are ad hoc additions that makes the theory now unfalsifiable and unscientific. And because in history, unfalsifiable theories have survived for thousands of years, I am concerned that this particular concoction of ad hoc additions to this theory will also preserve this belief system for a long time in the future too.